Today I'm going to be upgrading the cooling system of my 2005 Toyota Corolla XRS by installing a new radiator, new hoses, and a new thermostat. So let's go ahead and take all of this stuff out of the box. And this is gonna be everything that we're throwing in. This is not a colder thermostat, this is an OEM thermostat. Uh, I took it out of Toyota packaging, so it is just a stock thermostat. I didn't see a reason to go colder or anything. This car doesn't need a colder thermostat. I just wanted to refresh it. I don't know how old the thermostat is on this car. I'm guessing uh, it's from 2005. So I figured this car could probably benefit from just getting a new thermostat. There's no fans, unfortunately. I couldn't really find a fully bolt-on uh, fan shroud and fan kit. That is okay, I don't really need it. The fan here is working just fine. I don't see a reason to, uh, to swap it out. So we've got everything on box. Now we've got to get the car up in the air, drain all the coolant out, and then start taking it apart. And now the car is on jack stand, so before I can take all of this stuff apart, take the hoses out, the fan out, and everything else, I need to go under the car. And there's a couple plastic clips I need to take out and then move this plastic liner out of the way so I can drain the radiator. Here we go, the plastic is out. It's not too much, just a couple clips and a couple bolts on the side that bolt right there. Ooh, there's a little bit of rust I gotta clean up here. It doesn't look too bad, just surface rust. So now there's this little valve here which I've gotta take out and that is going to drain the radiator. So obviously I don't want it going all over the floor. So drain pan, slide it under there and that is going to hold all the coolant that comes out. Oh, here we go, the radiator's draining. It doesn't look like it's draining very quickly though. I wonder if I squeeze this hose up here. Ah, okay. I squeeze the hose, some more coolant evacuates, which is good. Well, this is just gonna take some time. I just have to let it all drain out and then we can carry on. I'm probably gonna have to sit around for, at this rate, about 10 minutes for all the coolant to come out. I mean, it's, it's not coming out very fast, so. Oh well, now we just play the waiting game. much time to take out the radiator. I uh, spilled a little bit of coolant on the floor and by a little bit, I, kind of a lot of bit. I gotta clean that up before I go on. Now it's time to pull the hoses off. So uh, this is not how the factory clamp is. Somebody must have serviced this in the past and just use one of these worm clamps, but it's whatever. So one clamp here and then another on the bottom. And I know this bottom coolant hose still has some coolant in there. Uh, that didn't come out. So I'm going to drag the pan over here. Okay, let's start with this hose. Well, I spilled a whole bunch of coolants on the floor again, so I brought out the mat here and I'm going to be using this from now on. Here we go. 
go. Here is the old radiator that I've just taken out. As you can see, there's a lot of plastic and it's pretty thin versus the new one is probably twice as thick. It, this is a single core. This is a dual core, all metal, all aluminum versus this is just a whole bunch of plastic. So this, yeah, huge upgrade. This is gonna cool way more efficiently than this old one here. But before we can get to the main event here with the radiator, I have to first of all take out these old coolant hoses because I do have new ones going in. And secondly, I am going to replace the thermostat, which is a bit tricky to get to. It's right up here behind, uh, sort of behind the alternator here. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't have to take that out because I'd rather not. I do already know that it is going to be a real challenge trying to film that, but let's get it. Here we are, the new hose is installed. I've got the old one right here. And yes, I know some of you are gonna comment it. I am no longer using the, uh, the spring clamps here. Instead, I'm using worm clamps. I know I am also team spring clamp. I do think that spring clamps are better, but I've also never had a problem using these in the past and I've used them on like, every car basically, so. I don't see that they'll uh, necessarily fail me here either. I just thought I'd mention that before any of you start screaming at me. So both of the old hoses are out. Now before I install this one, I have a thermostat to replace, which uh, this should be a fun job because the thermostat housing, if you can see it, is right back there. Uh, it's held on by two 10 millimeter nuts, I think, so it shouldn't be a major deal, but it is going to be difficult to film. So just know if you're going to do your thermostat, there's a couple 10 millimeters back here. You've got to reach and then it'll just come out. Uh, there shouldn't be any more drama than that. Yeah, it's so dark you can't even see anything. Hopefully I've explained it well enough. It's very straightforward. There's the thermostat housing. Two 10 millimeter nuts hold it to the block and do take those out, they'll come out. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Thermostat housing is out and I'm probably gonna spill coolant everywhere. Well, that was almost more trouble than it was worth, but in the end, we got there. This actually ended up getting stuck inside there. Uh, so I pulled the thermostat out separately from the, <laughs> from the rubber here, which usually never happens, which is, so, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. This is the old one, this is the new one. Uh, I guess this is an updated one. The spring looks a little different, but uh, these are the same 180 degree thermostats. So this is, they're, and they're both OEM. Obviously this is the original one that came with this car. And then this is a new Toyota thermostat. Uh, so yeah, they look a little different, but they are the same. Now it is time to put the thermostat in, well the new one, uh, back into the car. Which is gonna be fun, because then I've gotta deal with these two bolts, uh, or nuts, whatever. I have to say though, this is better than on my Subaru. On my Subaru, they are bolts that go in. So at least with this one, when I push the housing on there, it will hold itself on the threads and I don't have to hold it. With my Subaru, I do have to hold this while I put the bolts in and that was a little bit annoying. Uh, so this one at least is a little bit of a better design. Anyway, new thermostat, let's put it into the XRS. No, 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 no. 
I'm really glad I have a lot of extra one of these because I just dropped both of them. <laughs> oh no. And now to reach that top bolt there, I did unplug this little connector. So now it's time to plug it back in. Yay. Also, I've come to an interesting revelation. Can you tell that I'm right-handed? Maybe something will just give a little hint that this is my dominant hand. Okay, so this should be how the hose goes back in, because the thermostat is here, and this should point up into the radiator. All right, the new thermostat is in, new hoses are in. There's only one new thing left, and that is the radiator. Let's go ahead and get it in. Now on the new radiator here, the end tank is a little bit larger, so I might have to do a little bit of trimming on the core support, but I'm gonna throw the radiator in right now and see how it goes in. So it looks mostly okay, except for this corner here. It's hitting the core support. I think most people cut it. I don't have anything to cut it with, so I'm gonna see if I can just dent it in a little bit. Uh, funny enough, I also don't have a hammer. I know, right? I rented this entire garage to work on cars and I'm missing so many tools still. It's okay. I will figure it out. Overall though, not bad. It is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, uh, fitment wise. I thought it was gonna poke out a lot more. It's actually not too bad, which is very good because I don't want to have to cut or modify it too much here. Well, obviously, I wasn't missing a headlight before, and now I am, my headlight's over there. So, because I didn't have anything to cut it with, I just took these uh, vice grips and started bending away at the core support here. Uh, this isn't really a, a, a big structural part of the car, so I don't mind modifying it. And now the radiator is sitting in there pretty well, I'd say. I was a little bit nervous about this uh, plenum and specifically about the throttle here because already with the stock thin radiator, uh, this was really close to the fans. But when this radiator is tucked in here like this, it looks pretty much the same like the stock radiator, how how much it came out. This shouldn't be a big deal though. Worst case scenario, if the fan doesn't fit like this, I can just rotate the throttle body so that this uh, is either on top or on the other side. I'll probably change it to on top, that way I can still uh, actuate it by hand if I really need to for whatever reason. But I'm gonna leave that all alone. I don't really feel like working with that right now because I don't know if it's necessary. I need to put the fan on in order to see if it's really necessary to move this or not. But that doesn't matter for now because I still need to connect both of the hoses, the top and the bottom, and then I can test fit the fan. That's right. It's not necessarily this butterfly valve that I have to watch out for. It's the connector and it's hitting the connector. It's so, it's just barely off. I'm gonna see if I can make it work, but I don't think I can. Ah, shoot. Dang, it's so close too. Like it, it looks almost done, but it's just not quite. Well, eh, we win some, we lose some. Alrighty, so I know what you guys are thinking. Hey Will, are you really gonna hype yourself up over installing just a radiator fan? And my response to you is, of course I am! Of course I'm gonna hype myself up! Come on! Perfect fit! Look at that! The fan doesn't touch anything, it is perfect! You guys know this, I get the job done! When there's a problem, I get it done. I know how to get it done, trust me. All right, enough with the screaming. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, I got it to fit. I just needed to trim a little bit of plastic off of the sides, so there you go. This plastic used to be 
uh, on this side. You can kind of see where I where I broke it off there. Yep, just like that. And now it's the perfect fit. <laughs> Don't tell me there's something that I cannot do. I can do it. Bless. Trust me. <laughs> All we got to do now is, well, I mean, I'll have to put this clamp back on for the air injection. Besides that, it's all ready to go. Everything's plugged in. I just need to undo the cap and start filling it up with coolant. And making sure that coolant doesn't leak out from anywhere, obviously. Ah, oh, the cable's caught. <laughs> Okay, now it should be normal. And this is exactly why I have the car facing this way. So the tailpipe is going to, you know, face the door and then everything just goes out. Otherwise, if I had the tailpipe facing this way, like with the blue Corolla here, if I start it, then I'm just gonna basically just die. <laughs> So here inside the car, there's uh, not too much to look at. I just have the heat on just to have the heater core going. And I'm gonna be watching the temperature there. I have it turned on a little bit so I can feel to make sure uh, warm air is coming out, which it is, which is a very good sign that everything's working properly. Now it's just a waiting game. I literally have to wait for it to warm up and then open up the thermostat and then bleed the rest of the coolant in. So yeah, it's just a bunch of waiting around, which is not very fun to watch at all. <laughs> so I will see you when the coolant is all bled. Alrighty, so just doing a quick little test drive here just to make sure that under normal driving circumstances the car is not going to overheat or do anything that it's not supposed to. Jeez! Uh, I know you guys probably would want to see me uh, race that RSX, but uh, not going to because I haven't tested the new radiator yet. So if my car does overheat, then that's a little embarrassing. Also, I'm pretty sure the RSX is faster than an XRS anyway. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Yep, no, temperature is totally fine. Looks, it's chilling little pull and yeah temperature didn't go up it's uh, it's all chill so I think we're good yeah I'd, I'd say this is a very successful install and there we have it obviously the test drive is over and everything is looking good here's one final look at the new stuff if you don't look too closely it doesn't look like I really changed anything uh, the only key difference is this uh, is you know, all this being metal as opposed to plastic. But if you just take a quick glance and you don't think too much about it, it looks pretty factory, which I love. The only problem I could really see that's bothering me ever so slightly, which is not a big deal, but it's just, it's just slightly annoying. The radiator hose here, which is still a little bit warm, is touching against the intake. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, sort of move that out of the way. Another thing which is pretty cool is the hoses are red, so this car is now gained an extra 100 horsepower because as you know, red radiator hoses mean 50 a piece, and I've got two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. In all honesty, I'm actually not the biggest fan of red hoses. Uh, they were the only ones I could find on Monkey Wrench Racing. I'm sure they sell other colors too, but I just I couldn't find them. So I just went with red, but I'm not going to complain about it. The car is red, so red hose, I think it makes sense. But personally, I would have just gone with a black hose. It doesn't stand out so much, but either way, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And with that, this project is now finished. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>